Hello, everybody. This is Talon with another Nutrition Tier List, a series where I break down all the options in a given food group and rank them based on how nutritious they are and how good they are for your health. Today, we've got a very unique set of foods that didn't quite work under any other food group, so they're going to be getting a video all to their own. That being seaweed, or rather algae, because the parameters of those two words are in fact different. So seaweed, algae, whatever, stand apart due to their lack of complexity that's found in almost every other plant. No stems, no roots, no leaves, no fruits. They are almost exclusively aquatic, some are unicellular, and some don't even qualify as plants. And of course, their distinct structure is going to impact what they provide when consumed. Algae naturally produces the all-essential omega-3 fatty acids, making them the origin source in the aquatic food chain. Every fish or seafood choice that we've ever discussed that contains omega-3s only does so because that fish eats algae or it eats a fish that eats algae. And we're not talking about ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, the kind that's found in seeds and nuts. No, we're talking about DHA and EPA, docosahexanoic acid and eicosapentaenoic acid, the actually good ones. The other distinct nutrient found in seaweed is iodine, a mineral that I have yet to really talk about that much, but know that seaweed is considered to be the very best source of it. In fact, some contain so much that if overconsumed, it can actually be dangerous. Now, this list is going to feel a little off because there's not that many different foods on it, but boy do I have a lot to say about the ones that are on it. So with that being said, looking at the tiers for this video, we're going to be comparing the nutrient content and benefits of each seaweed against any shortcomings or health concerns that they may have. Keep in mind that these lists are ranked independent of each other, so an A-tier seaweed may not equate to an A-tier vegetable or an A-tier fruit. All numerical nutritional information on this list and across this series will be based on 100 grams of the individual food for the sake of consistency and ease of comparison. Though I must point out that the recommended amounts for many of these are much less, some as low as 10 grams, but some much more too. But if you're crazy enough to think that that's a good reason to ignore seaweed as a whole, I think you should seek help and the rest of them while you're at it. So with that being said, let's get to the list. First up, dried chlorella is a high-calorie algae with a transcendent micronutrient profile. This is a green, single-cell, freshwater algae. First off, chlorella is an excellent protein source by weight, containing more than twice as high a protein content as a carbohydrate content. And chlorella is often considered a more complete protein, meaning that it's not especially lacking in any of the nine essential amino acids. Chlorella is also about 11% fat, mainly polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially omega-3s. In fact, it is often one of the most omega-3 dense of all the options on this list. Omega-3 is, of course, improving the function of your brain, heart, eyes, and so much more. And beyond calories, chlorella is a phenomenal source of several micronutrients. It is the highest on this list of vitamin K, which helps the liver produce blood clotting factors, iron, which is part of hemoglobin, a protein that carries oxygen, zinc, which is used in healing, immunity, metabolism, and much more, manganese, which helps form bone, connective tissue, and hormones, vitamin B3, which is mainly used to turn food into energy, vitamin E, an antioxidant especially known for preserving skin health, and magnesium, a mineral directly involved in muscle and nerve function. It's also rich in a variety of carotenoids, including lycopene, beta-carotene, and lutein, which have antioxidant benefits, especially in preserving eye health and function. All in all, chlorella is shown to be a significant immune booster. Now, chlorella is often used for heavy metal detox due to its capacity for absorbing them, but this is exactly why you want to make sure to get a high-quality variant to avoid prior contamination. Interestingly, as nutrient-packed as chlorella is, it's actually lower in iodine than most seaweeds. And consumption of too much chlorella can be harmful. You generally only want to have about 10 to 20 grams at a time. But overall, chlorella is just ridiculous, and it might be the most automatic top-tier placement to date. Dried Dulls is an average calorie red seaweed with an impressive micronutrient profile. It is the highest in fiber on this list, about 20% of it, a mix of soluble and insoluble fiber which feeds beneficial intestinal bacteria and aids with regular digestion. It's also the best source on this list of potassium which mainly maintains cellular fluid balance. Dulls is also higher in omega-3s compared to most seaweed as well as iodine which is used in the production of thyroid gland hormones. Dulls is rich in a variety of antioxidants including various carotenoids, flavonoids, and vitamin C. Now, it's normally very high in sodium, which can be a deterrent for some people, and it's very possible to consume too much iodine from it, thus it's once again not recommended to consume more than 20 grams per day. But even in that amount, Dulce has a lot to offer, and I'm going to put it in the A tier.
Irish moss is a higher calorie red seaweed with a solid micronutrient profile. It is the most commonly eaten type of sea moss. Of all the raw seaweeds on this list, Irish moss is the best source of iron, which is needed for oxygen transport throughout the body, vitamin B2, which is used in macronutrient metabolism, and zinc, which is mainly known for wound healing, while it's also among the best sources of folate. Irish moss also contains a fair amount of DHA and EPA omega-3s, and it's higher in its iodine content as well. It also contains sulfated poly saccharides, a group of sugars found in the cell walls of some seaweeds. And this is actually the standout feature of Irish moss, as it is the most known and most accessible source of carrageenan. This is a hydrocolloid used medicinally and as a thickener in food. Though it is considered controversial health-wise, being difficult to digest for some people, but it doesn't seem to be actively harmful in its natural state. Irish moss is definitely an interesting specimen, and I'm going to put it in the B tier. Brown kelp is an average calorie seaweed with a sizable micronutrient profile. It is the best raw source of vitamin K, which is used in proper blood clotting, and it's higher in tyrosine, an amino acid that's used to produce neurotransmitters like dopamine and epinephrine, which regulate things like your mood and sleep. Brown algae also tends to have a higher antioxidant content, in this case including various flavonoids, fucoxanthin, a carotenoid, and fluorotannins, anti-inflammatory compounds shown to promote wound healing. It also contains fucoidin, a sulfated polysaccharide with protective benefits as well. Of course, kelp also contains DHA and EPA, though not as much as others, but the real kicker is that kelp tends to be the absolute highest in its iodine content, which in proper amounts helps to produce thyroid hormones, but it's definitely one of the foods where overconsumption of the nutrient is very doable. We're beginning to see a trend here that all types of seaweed have much to offer, and given what kelp supplies, I'm going to put it in the B tier. Nori is an average calorie red seaweed with a respectable micronutrient profile. It's a significant source of protein, especially for a plant-based source. Nori is the best source on this list of vitamin C, a powerful antioxidant that's also used to produce collagen, and carotenoids including alpha and beta carotene, lutein, and zeaxanthin, which also have antioxidant benefits, particularly towards preserving eye health. It's also one of the better sources of vitamin B2. Nori is also higher in DHA and EPA compared to most edible algae, and it contains a variety of antioxidants, including the aforementioned fluorotannins. Nori is not as high in iodine as other seaweed, but it has plenty of other healthful qualities that give it a leg up comparatively, and overall, I'm going to put it in the A tier. Ogo is a lower calorie red seaweed with a more unique micronutrient profile. It is notably the best raw source on this list of calcium, a mineral crucial for bone structure and strength, and it's among the best sources on this list of manganese and iron. Ogo is richer in iodine, which is used in thyroid hormone creation, and it contains its fair share of DHA and EPA omega-3s. It also contains agar, a sulfated polysaccharide shown to promote digestive health. A less common pick to be sure, but one definitely worth eating, I'm going to put Ogo in the B tier. Sea grapes, also known as green caviar, are a low-calorie green seaweed with a distinctive micronutrient profile. Firstly, it's the best raw source on this list of magnesium, a mineral crucial for muscle and nerve function, and vitamin E, an antioxidant known for preserving skin health. It's also rich in other antioxidants, including vitamin C and the previously mentioned fucoidin, a notable anti-cancer. And of course, sea grapes contain your usual iodine and omega-3s. I say that because while these are pretty standard on this list, they are a pretty big deal compared to every other food on earth. Overall, sea grapes are a great and nutritious choice, especially per calorie, and they're going to be going in the B tier. Dried spirulina is an average calorie algae with a stellar micronutrient profile. Spirulina is not a type of seaweed. Instead, it is a blue-green cyanobacteria, a single-cell organism that often gets lumped in with seaweed. Anyway, spirulina is the most protein-dense food on this list, and it's often considered a complete protein, meaning that it contains a significant amount of every essential amino acid. It also contains about 8% fat, with a varying amount of it being DHA and EPA omega-3s. Spirulina is the best source on this list of copper, which is needed to make red blood cells and absorb iron, and several B vitamins, including B1, B2, B5, and B6, which mainly work in metabolizing macronutrients, but also in maintaining the nervous and immune systems. It's also among the best sources of iron. It also uniquely contains phycocyanin, an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compound that gives spirulina its signature color. Now, spirulina is notably not rich in iodine, and it's not recommended for those with certain autoimmune disorders, as historically, it tends to make symptoms worse. It's also not recommended to overconsume it. 10 grams is the suggested amount, so it's basically a supplement. But even in that amount, there's nothing quite like spirulina, and it's going to rest easy in the top tier. 
And lastly, wakame is a higher calorie brown seaweed with a solid micronutrient profile. Wakame is usually regarded as the absolute highest in DHA and EPA among seaweed, the good versions of omega-3s that promote heart, brain, eye, and joint health, and much more. Wakame is the best raw source on this list of manganese, which aids structurally with bones, connective tissue, and sex hormones, and folate, a B vitamin needed for red blood cell and DNA synthesis. It also contains a few antioxidants unique to seaweed, Weed, the carotenoid fucoxanthin, and the wound healing fluorotannins. And wakame is among the highest in iodine, a bit of a double edged sword at this point, as it's essential, but it also limits how much can safely be consumed. Wakame is also higher in sodium than most seaweeds for those who need to keep track of that. Overall, an excellent choice. Wakame is going to be rounding out this very short list in the A tier. Now, let me make this very clear. All of these are phenomenal. Seaweed and algae as a food group is so good that it's hard to actually put into words. This is a prime example of why I rank lists independently, because on many other lists, none of these would ever go below the A tier. From sheer nutrient density, to unique nutrient delivery, to minimal drawbacks, and all of it in low-calorie, versatile packages, there's nothing out there quite like algae. Now, if you enjoyed this video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe, as I have plenty more of these on the way. I also encourage you to share it with someone who you think might find it useful or interesting. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other food groups you think I should rank, and remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.